part three of the uh, the latter days and Christ coming. I'm going to start and continue on with the verses. And I'm going to start in the book of Revelation. Revelation 13, 1 through 2. And I stood upon the sea, sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head heads the name, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was the feet of a bear, and his mouth has the feet of a lion, has the mouth of a lion, and the and the dragon gave him power and his seat and great authority. That's basically talking about the 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 beast system, the the the, the empire, the world government, the world empire, and it's also talking about it's kind of like and the uh, antichrist himself. They're burned. They're, it, it doesn't separate the two. They're both one in a sense. You can't separate the nation from the leader. Because it talks about again, you see the ten horns, the seven heads, ten horns. So you see, and then you see the uh, his seat, the dragon, the devil, gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. So that's talking again the Bible one empire and the and the Antichrist again. It's mentioned that this is them again. This is what John seen. Revelation thirteen four through eight, and they worship the dragon, the people on earth that that are deceived. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who was able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. By the way, some of you say, well, it says there are saints, the word that he fought with. Well, yeah, there are going to be people that have never heard the gospel before. They will not be sent strong delusion because they never have heard the gospel to start with. They don't know anything about Jesus. And, they're go and there's going to be two witnesses that will preach. At the first, I believe they're going to preach. They preach for three and a half years. So, common sense would tell you they would preach the first three and a half years, and they will preach that long, and nobody will be able to do anything to them. It's mentioned in Revelation 11 where basically they can't be, nothing can be done to them until they finish their testimony, which is after three and a half years. So they're going to preach that long, and the whole world pretty much is not going to like them. Pretty much the whole world is going to hate them and try their best to kill them all during that time, and God's not going to allow them to until three and a half years is up. And then the devil, is, and then the Antichrist is going to kill, it, kill them, and then their body is going to lay three and three days and three nights on, in the streets of Jerusalem because the people hate them so much that they're not even going to suffer to bury them. They're just going to leave their bodies there and die, and just rot. And everybody's going to celebrate. The whole world's going to celebrate and laugh and sing gifts one to another and party because they died. Yeah, it's really nice to have a nice worldwide celebration of Christmas because. You're because uh, two preachers got killed that you hated so much, and uh, God's gonna send to put His Spirit upon them. They're gonna rise up, and basically resurrect in the street, and it says the whole world's gonna see it. The whole world's gonna see this happen, and then it, and then they're gonna, then they're gonna, then the, then they're, they're gonna hear a voice from heaven. And it's gonna say, "Come up here." Then they're gonna rise up and they're gonna be carried away to heaven. Well. And then after them, there's going to be 144,000 Jews that are going to get saved, and they're going to be more likely preaching to the multitudes because it does mention in Revelation that a multitude does get saved in the tribulation period and is brought to heaven. So the two witnesses, I believe, are going to witness, in a sense, this could be how it happens, they're going to witness, and they're going to win 144,000 Jews to the Lord. And then, there, and then the Jews are going to go and preach to the whole world after the witnesses are killed. And they're going to preach to the whole world and they're going to win Jews and Gentiles that have never heard the gospel. And then they're going to win them and the ones that have also heard the gospel that didn't accept it are going to be the ones that are persecuting them and the ones that, are delu that have the delusion. So that's basically what it's talking about here. When it talks about making war with the saints, that's who they're going to be making war with. The ones that have never heard the gospel and got saved. Revelation 17, 
10, 4, 10 through 14. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is, of, is the eighth, and is of the seven. He and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are, saw are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And these shall make war of the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. That's talking again about the about the, uh, the one world government that's coming. These have one mind, and they should give their power and strength to the beast. That's the one world government, the ten nations, the ten horns, ten kings. The beast, the uh, world gov the actual world government, the leader. And he even says he's of the eighth. So he's like, he's of the eighth. He's the eighth of the seven. So, so, so it's, he's really something. So. And then it talks about here the seven kings, five are fallen. So what does that mean? That, think of the empire. It's talking about five, seven empires there. Five are fallen, one is, and one has not yet come. Five are fallen. What are the five prevalent empires that are mentioned in the Bible? Egypt. Syria, Babylon, Persia, Greece. Those five empires have fallen here. They have fallen. One is Rome, the actual Roman Empire, the physical Roman Empire of that time was standing at this time when this book, when the book of Revelation was written. The Roman Empire was in power near their height at this time. And then the other has not yet come. The revival of the empire hadn't come yet. That's what this was talking about. And it must continue in short space. The Roman revival of the empire, when it finally takes power, is only going to last for seven years. These other empires, most of them lasted for several hundred. The Roman revival of the empire is only going to last for seven years. The Third Reich lasted longer than that. It only lasted 12. It was supposed to last a thousand, but it only lasted 12. Yeah, that worked great.